against her lips, I barb and on her with it you luck for the ale. The wisest aunt, telling the saddest tale, sometimes the three such stories take of me. Then slip I from her bum, down tumbles she, and Taylor cries and falls into a cough, and then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh, and wax them in their mirth and knees, and swear a merrier hour was never wasted there, but room fairy, here comes over on. A monarch's to behold the swelling sea. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles all, the flat, unraised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Can this copy hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wooden O the very cast that did affright the air in Agincourt? Oh, pardon, since a crooked figure may attest in little place a million, and let us, Cyprus, to this great compte on your imaginary forces work. Suppose, within the girdle of these walls, and now confined two mighty monarchies, whose high up wearied in a bottom front, the perilous narrow ocean parts asunder. Peace out our imperfections with your thoughts. Into a thousand parts divide one man and make imaginary puissance. Think when we talk of horses that you see them, printing their proud hooves the receiving earth. For it is your thought that now must deck our kings. Carry them here and there, jumping over time, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass. For the wit supply, admit us, chorus to this history, who we'll prolong like your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge. Our play! Welcome to my new vlog. So as you've just seen in, through the other clips, I'm here in Stratford-upon-Avon and I'm seeing two noble kinsmen at the RSC tonight, so I'm very, very excited. But I thought I'd um, show you the other Shakespeare things I've, I've been doing today. So we started off at Shakespeare's birthplace, which was really good fun to go around. And I got a lady to perform the O for a Muse of Fire monologue from Henry V. And then we went over to Shakespeare's new place, which he brought for... 160 pounds I think so that was quite amazing to find out just how wealthy Shakespeare was for, was a result of of being a shareholder and in his place and other means of income and then after that we met up with my friend Kate who I hadn't seen in over a year so she's currently doing an adaptation of Dracula at the Attic Theatre where she's playing Dracula's bride who's the creepiest character, lucky girl and it was just so wonderful to catch up with her, I've missed her and then me and Dad walked over to Anne Hathaway's cottage and we're now back at the, now at the hotel so I am quite relieved to be back so I am quite tired and I'm having to go out again soon for the next thing which Mum and Dad haven't told me about so yeah I'm really enjoying myself so far and I'll see you in the next bit, bye! sitting in the front row as you can probably as you can probably see. I've got the band warming up upstairs. So I'm a little bit <laughs> really, really excited to be here and um, I don't know you to know what you spent so this bad on my list of this um, can be added to the list of um Shakespeare shows and scenes. So I can't quite believe I'm here. Good morning everyone, so it's the, it's the day after the show, it's really good but I'm not going to talk about that now, so this morning, 
Oh, Mama's sister. So this morning, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to, well today, I'm going to go and do a stage combat workshop at the Core Learning Centre, I think it's called, but first we need to go and find somewhere to get a sandwich. So we um, I got, got my sandwich, it was from a place called Greg's I believe it was, which is just up there. And then I've got some orange juice, so a bit happier now. So when I said the Claw Learning Centre, I actually meant the Claw Learning Centre, which I think is how you, they pronounce it. So it is just over there. And then over there is the RSC. So it was over there and at the swan where I saw two naval kinsmen last night. Awesome show, really, really awesome. So I'm quite excited to do this um, stage combat class and don't quite know what to expect because I haven't done really anything in regards to stage combat in a long time. So a bit nervous, but overall very, very excited. One, so this is the final part of the vlog. So on this bit, I'm just going to do a bit of a roundup of the of the two days in Stratford. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the stage combat workshop I did yesterday, and then do a bit of a video review of Two Noble Kinsmen, which I saw at the Swan Theatre at the RSC. So the stage combat workshop yesterday was at the Claw Learning Centre, and it was run by a man called Tom, who's done a lot of who's a He's a stage combat coordinator and he's taught at all sorts of places. So at the beginning we kind of did like techniques. So we started off with playing a version playing the zombie game where the first version was in pairs and we had to dodge a zombie. The second time was when we were all together, when the whole group was together in this perimeter space. And then we had and he tapped people on the shoulder when we when we closed our eyes. So when he said action we all had to start walking around and the zombies had to start getting people. And then the third bit was when was when we were in groups of four. So three people were zombies, one person was the survivor. So that was kind of done to just as, and what from what I got that was that was to enhance and enhance and create our sense of awareness of this of the space, which is a, something really important for stage combat. So the next bit was we were learning how to punch people, so where to punch people in the stomach. You know, where to, we were learning kicks, we were learning shoves, we were learning how to fall down on the ground, which is basically just a triangle where you put your leg back and then you just let yourself go forward. And then it's kind of e it's better to do it without stretching your arms out because it just doesn't look realistic. And then the next bit was um, we were learning a routine which we were going to perform to parents and really, really, really enjoyed it. So something that was so memorable about it was just how sweaty and how hot we got because we were all working so hard and having to re fuel our intense energy into the into our fights and it was kind of bo kind of echoing and bouncing off the walls and onto each other. <laughs> so that was one feature that was very <laughs> memorable about it. And I really, and I think just doing it just sort of gave an insight onto how co how important like a fight can be on stage and how it enhances the drama and also kind of teases the audience audience's emotion because you know like if I watch a fight on stage like what I saw at Two Noble Kinsmen I was really really gripped and a bit like oh god where is this gonna go where is this gonna go <laughs> so that was really really good fun and. I really, really enjoyed the workshop, and it's made me really hope to do more, uh, to do more combat, to combat at some point. Though, not quite sure how because the university where I want to go to doesn't really offer it, but I think I can figure out a way. That was a stage combat workshop, so I'm still a bit sore um, after it, kind of in my legs and my back, but got some terrific bruises on my knees. So. And as they say, <laughs> wear your scars with pride. <laughs> So now I'll talk about the um, Two Noble Kinsmen, which I saw this evening. So I got the tickets from my parents as, as part of an 18th birthday celebration. So I was sitting in the in the middle of the very front rows, and that was quite and that was an experience within itself because um, I like I got to see like everything and how I like the intensity of the actors' facial expressions and how the set and technicalities were all kind of working together with the performance to enhance the um, spectacle for the audience. And honestly, the show was absolutely incredible. Really, really was. Really, 
honestly, I haven't been that gripped by a show in ages, so if you don't know what um, What's in Earth 2 Noble Kingsman is all about, it's based on a Geoffrey Chaucer Canterbury tale, which I think is the Knight's Tale, and it's about two cousins called Arshite and Palamon, who are best BFFs, but when they are captured at the end of the battle and thrown in prison, they both fall in love with Amelia, who is the sister of Hippolyta, who's the wife of Theseus, and eventually that friendship turns into very bitter, bitter rivalry, which ends up, which ends up just breaking the relationship between them and ends up in tragic consequences. Okay, sorry. Hopefully that wasn't a spoiler for anyone, but okay. So the set was kind, the set was kind of like a very much an Athenian kind of arena, and it had lowered like mesh on both sides which was used to like create the prison and it was very very I thought it was very effective and Arsa and Palamon kind of climbed over it over it and that allowed the audience imagination to picture it as a prison. The and the set was also showing how also paving way to the action of where the relationship would break down it and it re would result in war between the two cousins. And then and then the sound, um, very great use of sound, um, to in sound to enhance the spectacle and the lighting. So the technicalities worked really, worked really, really well together, and I was, I was very impressed. And I think um, another thing that was just so good about the set in the play was just how was how it showed just how effective a, a minimalist set can be, because often you can kind of get like big, like sets of big bits of scenery, and they just don't have the Im impact that a min minimalist staging can have because um, like with a minimalist staging w what I find is how is how that they can really access the audience imagination which was also helped by the tech and how just how it really helped to sound like waves into the audience's brain and how it made us interpret the Im imagination eventually interpreted it. So really great performances um, by everyone in the cast. So I really liked how they played um, Theseus as this a um, bit absurd bisexual bisexual character, but yet he still had the authority. So that was a really good performance by. Sorry if I'm. Are you sorry if I pronounce your name wrong? Gaiuri Sarosi. I thought he was very <laughs> gave a very good performance, and Alison McKenzie very good performance as Hippolyta. And how, and how she presented her as this really quite tough and very tough woman and she's a very tough woman and the Scottish accent gave that kind of air of foreign, foreignness to her and how she's not kind of going to stand by and let all the men have all the excitement or she's not going to be submissive to the will of men, she's, she knows her own mind. And I think two standout performances were definitely Jamie Wilkes and James Corrigan as Arsite and Palamon. Mm -hmm. Their performance was just honestly just incredible to watch and it was just and it was mesmerizing how they were showing their relationship at first as really quite very quite banterish and and, stupid, and like childlike to show their friendship but then to show, mark its progression of how it would turn into a bit of rivalry and I thought they did that, that very, very well. Though sitting in the front row at one point, I got a look from Jamie Wilkes playing Arsite because he was asking the audience, asking how proud he should be, and I didn't quite know what what to say. So all I could really manage was a. <laughs> but hey, I mean, he said thumbs up was a good response. Was a good response. <laughs> God, even now I'm still laughing about about that because I just didn't know what to say. And then we had a really great performance by Danusia Samuel, who played the Jada's daughter. So just, ha and it was also, so like um, them, she also had to show the deterioration of the character because of her impossible love for Palamon. And I think it, her performance really showed like Shakespeare in his prime and how he portrays like the madness and the psychological features of the characters because often I, I find with certain, with this certain place, the psychological processes are, are overlooked. So I thought how she did that really enhanced the drama and the psychological aspect of the play because you know in many ways as an audience we were kind of having to go through like a psychological mindset to kind of like understand the story and understand 
like the intentions and the rivalries between between the characters and and, I re and another feature that I really liked about the play was how it, it, it explored things like sexuality, gender and identity, love, friendship, confusion and heartbreak. And I, and I thought those things kind of echo, echo today and, and young people. So I thought how they portrayed that in the show really allowed the, allowed the audience to kind of understand the, understand the play better. Whereas if they tried to do it in the more Shakespeare, Shakespeare drama... So yeah, I think that's really um, all I can all I can say re really in terms of review. Um, thank you so much to everyone in involved. I'm really going to treasure this 18th birthday celebration trip, and just le I learned so much, which I hope to take for take forward in future drama and acting training. And be because it was just such an awesome experience, and everyone was just so fantastic, I'm going to give the play nine nine out of ten. And I'm going to finish with the line, Tis, tis pity love should be so t tyrannous. That's really the end of the vlog. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Sorry for the kind of kind of stuttering. Just had just was a bit busy earlier and I'm trying to juggle so much my mind just gets a bit ooh. <laughs> but I hope you've really enjoyed this vlog and I'm hoping to do more like video reviews of things I've seen. And in below, I'll, I'll attach the link to the Shakespeare website, Royal Shakespeare Company website. So if you haven't had a chance, you can check, you can go and check them out. Then I'll also, I'll also attach some other bits and pieces. So, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this this, this vlog, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>